Hello, I'm William Bell with AllThingsFulfilled.com, and I'm going to share with you a video on miracles, spiritual gifts, and the fruit of the Spirit. We often get questions about whether or not miraculous gifts continue today. Do we have spiritual gifts in the body of Christ today? Can we heal the sick, raise the dead, interpret unrevealed dreams, drink poison without harm, or speak in tongues? Many believe it is possible to do all of these, or at least some of them. In addition, they believe that the Bible says these powers are possible for believers today. Others may go so far as to say that if you have not spoken in tongues or performed any miracles, you are not saved. When speaking of spiritual gifts, everyone claims the good, but to this day, after over 30 years of studying and teaching about spiritual gifts, I have never heard, seen on TV, or witnessed in any church anyone practicing the use of gifts as the apostles did. The gifts were not only used to bless and heal, they were also used for punishment and disciplinary purposes. When we read Acts chapter 5, we can see where Ananias and Sapphira, his wife, were put to death during a church service. In addition, Paul struck Elymas the sorcerer blind for harassing him and trying to lead Sergius Paulus the proconsul from the faith. Later, he threatened to use the gifts which he calls the rod of power against the impenitent among the church at Corinth. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 20 through 21. Also, 2 Corinthians 12, verse 21, and chapter 13, verses 2 and 10. In the Old Testament, the ten plagues were punishments and discipline, even at set times and intervals, upon Pharaoh and Egypt. Miriam's leprosy in Numbers chapter 12 and the earthquake and ground swallowing of Korah's rebellion were all punishment and disciplinary acts of God and demonstrated another use of miraculous gifts. Now let's talk about the gifts being prophesied in the Old Covenant. Spiritual gifts were prophesied in the Old Testament in Joel chapter 2 verses 28 through 32. Peter and the eleven apostles affirmed that Joel's prophecy was being fulfilled on the first Pentecost following the resurrection and ascension of Jesus the Christ. Acts chapter 2, verses 16 through 21. Speaking of the gift of tongues, he said, This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Now, the signs were to follow believers. So not only did the apostles work them, but believers could as well. Because in Mark 16, verses 17 and 18, the text says, And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Now, what are the assumptions made as a result of passages such as these? Some believe that these gifts were permanent and intended for all believers for all time. This is incorrect. In fact, these gifts were for a limited duration and were only intended to bring about a more important work of the Holy Spirit. So let's consider the prophecies which limited the duration of these miraculous gifts. The gift of tongues, the gift of healing, the gift of laying on of hands to cast out demons, etc. All were gifts that were limited to a period of 40 years according to Bible prophecy. They were patterned after the miracles, signs, and wonders which God did through Moses when he led Israel out of Egypt to the land of Canaan. And so the point that we're making is God did not use an indeterminate time, but he chose a very specific time to limit those gifts, and that was according to the days of Israel's coming out of Egypt. So let's examine Michael's prophecy. We have several translations. One is the Septuagint version, which is the Greek translation of the Old Testament scriptures. He says, And according to the days of thy departure out of Egypt shall ye see marvelous things. Several translations use the term marvelous things, such as the King James Version and the English Standard Version. But the New International Version also uses the word wonders, and then the New American Standard Version uses the word miracles. And so marvelous things, wonders, and miracles all refer to the miracles, wonders, and signs which were done during the days of Egypt. And God said he was going to show those same signs for the same duration in the last days when the gifts were poured out. So according to the days of your coming out of the land of Egypt, I will show miracles, wonders, or marvelous things as per those various translations. And in Hebrews chapter 3, verses 9 through 10, God said that that generation saw his works for 40 years, and for that reason, because of their unbelief, he was grieved with that generation. In like manner, the gifts of the Holy Spirit 
that is, the miraculous gifts, would endure for 40 years. From Pentecost of A.D. 30, following the resurrection and ascension of Jesus Christ, until A.D. 70, at the fall of Jerusalem in 70 A.D. Now, that is the time for Israel's true deliverance, of which their bondage in Egypt was only a shadow and type. Through Christ, God delivered them from the bondage of sin and death. Now, let's discuss the fruit of the Spirit. The ultimate aim of spiritual gifts was to bring the church to the new age of light, out of the world of darkness and sin, which characterized Judaism under the law, and animal's blood, which could not redeem them, according to Hebrews 10, 1 through 4. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Ephesians 5, 8 through 10. So the life in the new age of Christianity was to be a life that would characterize the fruit of the Spirit and would be just the opposite of the darkness under which they lived in Judaism. So what happens is people are majoring in the minors. Now, why is there not as much emphasis on the fruit of the Spirit as there is on the sensationalism behind spiritual gifts? One can be saved without spiritual gifts, but a person cannot be saved without the fruit of the Spirit. And that's important to know. So let's examine Matthew 7, 21 through 23, where Christ condemned some who worked miracles, prophesied in his name, and even did works of power. He told them to depart, saying, I never knew you, describing them as workers of iniquity or workers of lawlessness. Paul said the same in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 and 2, when he said, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I am as a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. He says, Though I have all knowledge so that I can understand all mysteries, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, without love it profits nothing. And so gifts without love meant nothing. Demonstrating the fruit of the Spirit. This is the most important thing that we should learn about the work of the Holy Spirit. Galatians is more emphatic than Ephesians in the concept of walking in the Spirit. And he shows the contrast between the works of the flesh in chapter 5, verses 18 through 21, with the fruit of the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Galatians 5, 22 through 24. The Bible teaches that miraculous gifts would cease. Since their duration was only 40 years, it is clear that the miraculous gifts would cease, just as the miraculous manna from heaven ceased when Israel entered Canaan in the historical case. You can see Joshua 5, 9 through 12. Love never fails, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 8 through 13. Love, a fruit of the Spirit, was the more excellent way which would not cease. And therefore, Emphasis must be placed on the fruit of the Spirit as those miraculous gifts ceased at the end of the Jewish age in 70 A.D. For true spiritual gifts assessment, it should be done with the fruit of the Spirit and not with fake miracles and delusions of power. I'm William Bell. Thank you for watching.